Welcome, in this video we will be explaining a Monte Carlo simulation. Monte Carlo simulations can be used to create probabilistic forecasts based on historical data. Its foundation is in statistics and in this video we want to give you more background of what is going on behind the scenes and how it can be used within the context of product delivery. So the first step when we do Monte Carlo simulation is that we gather throughput data historic throughput data. And um, throughput uh, is the number of items that we have delivered in a specific unit of time, um, which we are referring here to as a period. That could be weeks, days, sprints, whatever uh, works best for you, but it has to be consistent within the whole simulation. Next step is that we then run a high number of simulations based on this historical data. And then as a final step, we are extracting and visualizing the results. Cool, let's put this in practice. So firstly, we want to explore the question we get asked often, which is how much work can be done within a certain time frame? Now, in this example that we will be showing you, we are going to have a look at iterations of one week. So, as you can see from this list here on the left side, uh, we assume that we have historic data from six past periods. And here in our example, a period uh, is a week. That is our assumption here, but as already mentioned, it can be any other uh, period of time. So important is that on the right side, uh, we refer to this as iterations and those iterations are more the looking into the future. And this have to be exactly the same uh, timeframes that uh, the periods in our historic data. So we are now choosing one of those historical data sets randomly. So we simulate this by um, having a dice and it shows now two. That means we go to period number two and then we use the throughput for this period and put it into our result list on the right side. And then we repeat this. So in the next uh, scenario, we have five. So we go to period number five draw the throughput of four into the result table, repeat again, this time it's a one, but we put the six into our result, we have a four and so on. We are doing this multiple times and then we complete for the 10 iterations that we are uh, want to forecast here. And once we have uh, run this for 10 iterations, we can uh, just summarize uh, the numbers here in the table on the right. And in this case, we will see that the sum for this simulation is now 58. Now let's visualize this. So on this chart, um, the X axis shows the sum we got from this simulation we just saw, which is 58. And on the y-axis, it shows the occurrences. So in this example, we can see how many simulations resulted in the sum of 58, which is so far only one. We run another simulation, and this time it results in the sum of 59. So it shows one record of 59 on the chart. And then we repeat this numerous of times. We can now see that, for example, another simulation resulted in 58. And therefore, the bar now increases to show two occurrences. So in our example here, we run 1000 simulations here. And then uh, after visualizing all those results, um, it uh, chart might look similar to this. So this chart can now help us to explore the probabilities of how many items we might complete in 10 iterations. What you can see is that on the right side, we see numbers that are very unlikely that we will achieve these. And on the left, 
we see numbers that are unlikely that we will end up with as little items completed as those numbers suggest. So while there is still a re remaining probability for the low and high numbers, it's most likely that we will end up somewhere in the middle. Let's now find out how many items we might complete with a, uh, with a probability of 50%. To extract this information, we have to find the point in the chart where at least 50% of our simulations ended with that result. So with 1,000 simulations, 50% will be 500. We now start from the right and accumulate the occurrences as long as we reach 500. The point on the x-axis where we stop, we can read as there is a 50% chance that we might complete those number of items at a minimum within 10 iterations. So in our example, this is 62 items. If you want to have a higher confidence, then obviously the number of items has to be lower because there is a higher chance that we can complete these lower numbers of items. So let's rerun this with a probability of 80%. 80% of our 1,000 simulations is 800. So we run from right to left until we reach an accumulation of 800. And then we will see that we might complete 56 items or more with a probability of 80%. So we had a look at forecasting how many items we may complete in a certain period of time. Now let's have a look how long it will take to complete a number of items. For example, let's say we have a backlog of 50 items to complete and we want to forecast when this is likely to finish. To simplify this example, we base this on the assumption that this product backlog is stable, it does not change and the same with regards to the performance of the team. It is important to note that you would not run the simulations only once. You would run this multiple times as new data constantly emerges and this updates the forecast with the most current data. So again, we use our historic data and randomly pick a throughput from one of those periods that we put into our result table. This is exactly what we did previously. The only difference is that we now look at the sum and stop once we exceeded the target number of items. As in our example, we are looking into the time it takes to complete 50 items. This first simulation suggests that there might be a chance to finish those 50 items in eight iterations. So we again record this result in a chart and then rerun many more of those simulations. After 1,000 simulations, the result could look like this. Again, we could draw the percentiles and we see that there's a 50% chance that we will finish these 50 items in eight iterations or less. To increase the probability to 80%, we might need nine iterations or less. And to increase this to 90% probability, we need one more iteration. We could now visualize this in a calendar. As we base our examples on iterations of one week length, we can translate the number of iterations needed into weeks and then use this visualization to have meaningful conversations with stakeholders. It makes clear that the more confidence we would like to have, the further away the forecasted completion date will be. We have to point out that in this example, the higher percentiles are on the right, while in the previous example, they were on the left. So accumulation happens here from left to right, while in the previous example, it happened the other way around. This is because in this chart, the highest delivery performance is on the left, where we need less time to complete an amount of items. On the other chart, we had the number of items on the x-axis, so the higher delivery performance is on the right, where we complete more items in the same time period. So let's have a look at a summary. The primary purpose of using Monte Carlo simulations is to initiate healthy conversations, not to predict the future. 
One of the benefits we showed in these examples is that we can move away from using averages, giving us richer insights. As we mentioned in these examples, we assumed a stable system. However, we more than often operate in a complex environment where there's more unknown than known and we can't predict the future. We can, however, inspect and adapt to the current situation based on insights we gather on an ongoing basis. So thank you for watching this video. We hope you found it helpful. Keep calm and scrum on.